Today we are working on the question, which value of x makes 7 plus 5 times x minus 3 equals 22, a true statement. So they want us to solve for x. And when we say we want to solve for x, what that basically means is we want x on one side of the equal sign by itself and everything else on the other side. So what we need to do is start moving those things that are keeping x from being by itself on the equal sign um, to the other side. And then once x is completely by itself, we have solved for it because it's going to equal the answer. So think of the equal sign like a wall, basically. We want x by itself on this side of the wall. We want to move everything else to the other side. That means we need to get rid of the 7. We need to get rid of the 5. And we need to get rid of the minus 3. And you see I included the signs um, with those. Now, when you're moving things over, there's a certain order that you want to move it in. Um, I like to think of them as the things that are by themselves. They're single and the things that are attached to other things. So always move the single or the things that are by the numbers that are by itself. It doesn't have to be a number, but anything by itself, move that first. So in this case, the seven is completely by itself because the five is attached to that parentheses, which is... Um, holding the x minus 3 in there, and then also the negative 3 is lo uh, locked in into the parentheses with the x. So we want to move this 7 first. The way we move it is we look at what relationship it has right now on this side of the equation, mainly with the x, and then we're going to do the opposite. Right now, 7 is adding, and the way I know that is because I look at not this plus sign in between, but the plus sign in front of the 7, which we just don't write because we don't need to know. It's, if it's positive, we don't have to write a plus. But it's adding. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of addition, which is to subtract. So I'm going to subtract 7 from this side. Now, think of your equal sign as a scale. You want to keep the scale balanced, which means whatever you do to one side of the equal sign needs to happen exactly the same way on the other side. So since I subtracted 7 here, I'm going to also subtract 7 here. And so 7 minus 7 is 0. It cancels out. I don't need to write the 0. Just basically know that it's gone. And that leaves me with a positive 5. Again, we don't have to write the plus sign if it's starting off the thing. Um, parentheses or times x minus 3 equals. Now I want to do 22 minus 7, which gives me 15. Okay. Our next step is to see what can we move next to get that x by itself. Now, you don't want to get rid of anything in the parentheses until the parentheses is gone. Think of the parentheses like a container holding it in. We can't take the thing out until we actually open the container. We need to remove the parentheses to actually get rid of the 3. So the first thing we want to get rid of is the 5. Again, ask ourselves what is the relationship between this 5 and what's going on in the equation, more specifically the x. And I see 5 is right next to the parentheses. That tells me it's multiplying. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is to divide. So we're going to divide both sides, because whatever we do to one side, do it to the other side, by 5. And of course, 5 divided by 5 is 1. It cancels itself out because 1 times anything is just the number. So we don't have to write that 1. It's gone. And um, I'm going to write what's left over, which is x minus 3. And since I don't have that 5 anymore, because the 5 was what I needed the parentheses for to hold in the stuff so I wouldn't get them confused, um, it, was showing, it was showing me that it was distributing. Um, since we got rid of the 5, we don't need the parentheses anymore. There's nothing confusing us. So we're just going to write x minus 3 without the parentheses. And that equals to 15 divided by 5, which is 3. Now, we only have one number left to get x by itself, which is that minus 3. So I want to get rid of that. And the way I'm going to do that is to do its opposite. So right now, the 3 is subtracting. I'm going to add 3. And again, do it to both sides. And on this side, it's going to cancel it out. I'm running out of space a little bit here, so I'm going to squeeze it in. But then I'm going to write it to the side as well. So we're left with the x once we cancel out our 3s. All we're left with is x over there because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. is gone. And then over here, I have 3 plus 3, which is 6. So right now, what I have left over is x equals to 6. So now I've solved for x because x is by itself. And that tells me that 6 is what makes this a true statement. Um, we can plug it back in to check it if we're done. So that would just be 7 plus, let's put a 6 here for the sake of time. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 7 equals 22. So that is a true statement.